about everywhere on the internet, you can read and hear and view plenty about the debate that goes on surrounding standardized tests and the assessments that are given to students in all levels of education. I am ever formulating my opinions on this, but since my school does um, submit to the state standardized tests, even though we are a private school, and we have several different measures uh, throughout the year to assess the students' performance and their growth, um, academically speaking, I do have to pay attention to my scores. I do nerd out a little bit over the data that is provided. And so I wanted to talk today about how do we use assessments to kind of inform our instruction. Every year I'm a little surprised by different things that kind of emerge. So at the beginning of the year, I think I had three students that were about right where they needed to be, three out of 15. And according to this particular assessment, we're testing right on level beginning of second grade, they're right where they need to be. The rest of my class was below where they needed to be. So obviously that gives me a really clear goal. I want all of my students to be where they need to be by the time they graduate second grade. So when they go to third grade, they're not coming into the deficit. They're totally ready to go and embrace the curriculum that third grade teachers have for them. Despite being a consummate idealist, I do have some element of realistic expectations when it comes to my students. I wanna make sure that they have achieved a substantial amount of growth if they are coming into me at a deficit. So that's sort of the number one thing I'm looking for is have they achieved the growth I'm looking for? If I can get them to the ultimate level, that is definitely always my primary goal. If not, are they at least on track to get there? One of the things I noticed in looking at my data this year, and I'm specifically talking about the reading data, I had a student that came in at a kindergarten comprehension level in second grade. And this student also happened to be one of my most behaviorally challenging students. This particular student um, achieved the most significant growth from the beginning of the year until now out of all of the students in my class. This student went um, from a kindergarten level to an almost third grade level. So not only did they meet the expectation for middle of second grade in reading and comprehension, they have surpassed it and are already past where I would have expected that a student coming in with zero deficits would be at this point in the year and even at the end of second grade. So besides that being super exciting um, to see that kind of data always makes my teacher heart happy, I also found it um, something I wanted to reflect on. When students don't achieve what we would have hoped that they would achieve by a certain point in time, as evidenced by test scores, obviously that's a time that we reflect and we look at well, why and what could I have done differently or what can I do now to give them the extra push that they need so that this won't be the result that they have when they take the assessment again at the end of the year. However, when students do surpass our expectations, I still think it's a really important time to reflect on why. Um, obviously, I know that I'm only a part of that equation. This student came in exceptionally bright in my opinion, although having a lot of learning deficits from their situation before, they were um, definitely had the capacity to really show a lot of growth. The behavioral concerns, um, you know, meant that this student was going to get a lot of my attention right off the bat. And so a lot of times when there's individual group going, groups happening in my classroom, the student isn't able to function in that they would come to my small group table. So then I was teasing one of my colleagues and saying maybe they got extra because they were with me so much that even when it wasn't their guided reading group time, they're getting the guided reading groups that they weren't even slotted for because I have them sitting at my table kind of helping me and um, helping me along. Anyway, all of this to say that um, even though I was happy about the growth that my students made, I don't think that that means I can rest on my laurels and um, have it not inform my instruction. All of my guided reading groups get changed up based on the assessment data that I collect. They are fluid throughout the year. This isn't the only time that they move. At different times, I move kids based on my observations, based on many assessments that I'm giving, um, and just based on my knowledge of them as a student and what they're capable of and, and what they're achieving. 
but I definitely like to really change things around when I have all of this very scientific and at my fingertip data to inform my groups and my instruction on a more differentiated level. One of the most important things that I have found about great teachers that I admire, something that they all have in common, is that they are extremely reflective about their students, about their practice, about their day. So I've really adopted um, some of those practices into my daily life in all things, but especially when it comes to my classroom and my educational day. I really like to replay the day, think through what went well, what didn't go so well, what seemed to really catch on with my students, what was feeling like it wasn't catching on the way I wanted it to, what were the students responding to, what were they excited about, um, and then I tend to tweak everything based on my reflection. So what I saw, what I observed in my students informs the way that I'm going to teach the next day and the next week and on and on and on. One of the ways I like to reflect too and to improve my own practice is by watching other teachers teach, teachers that inspire me. I'm so fortunate and blessed that I have teachers right in my own pod area, in my own school, and in every pod area, honestly, in my school, that I just find inspiring and awesome every time I go in their room. And it's not uncommon at all that I would go in and just kind of like sit in the back of somebody's room and kind of see what they're doing. Um, I find that re-energizes me, it helps me think about um, what I'm doing for um, my kids and what I'm doing in my classroom and how I can tweak it. And Twitter and my professional learning network, Instagram, uh, different communities I'm involved in on the internet, also amazing ways to get a glimpse into how other educators are doing this thing we call teaching. But a word of caution um, is something that Theodore Roosevelt once said, and not to me personally, but you know, sometimes I feel like he is saying it to me. He comes back from the grave and he's like, Christine. Um, I'm not sure who he said to. You know what, honestly, I kind of really want to know the history of this quote now. I've been throwing this quote around for so long and I have no idea the context of what he was talking about and I should know it. Okay, so I'll look into that later. But um, the quote that Theodore Roosevelt said is that comparison is the thief of joy. A good friend of mine and mentor at my school has often said to me, don't compare your beginning to someone else's middle, don't compare your middle to someone else's end, meaning of career, because experience and reflection are a huge teacher uh, to us personally, and we only can get better with time and experience and growth. And because I think our work is so important, it's easy to feel like the rush because you wanna be the absolute best you can be because what we're doing matters a lot. So it's not like the kind of job that you're just like, oh, I'll be better at this in a couple of years. You're like, I wanna be the best I can be at this now because I have actual people in front of me sitting in desks expecting me to be great. I don't wanna feel like they're not getting as good an experience as they would have in someone else's room ever. That's unacceptable to me. But. I feel like we reflect so that we can learn, so that we can grow, so that we can get better. We look at our students so that we can see who they are as people. We look at our data so that we can see how our instruction is informing who they are as people and learners and academics. Um, and we look at our mentors online and in the flesh as inspiration, but not to compare yourself in a way that's gonna make you feel small or paralyzed or not reflect on who you are now and who um, you need to be to be the best teacher that you can. It's time for virtual high fives. My first virtual high five goes to someone I'm following on Instagram, um, Colleen Graves, and her Instagram is Maker Teacher Librarian. I don't know if you can see that video going right now, but some of the things that she's doing have been super inspiring to me. I have a STEM goal this year to uh, involve more STEM, STEAM and design the thinking into my classroom. And this Instagram account um, has been super inspirational to me and she's doing some really exciting things with kids and maker spaces. So virtual high five to Colleen. Another Instagram virtual high five goes to Sheila Jane and the Teach Happy community. I'm a proud member of the Teach Happy community for their entire uh, tenure, I think. I think I was like among the first members, um, but it is their one year birthday, and if you're not a Teach Happy community member, uh, definitely check it out. Sheila Jane has awesome 
inspiring, just happy thoughts to share with teachers and lots of things that kind of focus around the mental health um, of teachers and the support network that we all need in each other. So high five to Shield Jane and the Teach Happy community. My next virtual high five goes to Tim Carpenter and his um, tweeting second grade cougars. I absolutely love other classes tweeting out, um, empowering student voices, giving them a chance to learn to use social media. I just love the energy that he brings to uh, my Twitter universe through his class and their tweets. They have a tweeter of the day that tweets out something about themselves and then kind of records what's going on in their classroom. It's very similar to what we're doing in our class. Um, and I just love seeing it. I love seeing like-minded teachers who are putting kids first and also teaching them how to be responsible with social media and how powerful their voices can be when they're elevated and shared. So love that. So if you're a teacher of any grade level and you've stumbled across this video, I'd love for you to share how you reflect and how your reflection on your students as individuals, on your practice, on your day and your data informs what you're doing in the classroom. And if you have questions for me, put them below and I'll try to take care of them soon.